Nevertheless, you can measure the propagation of that error as it reflects on the excess power. Systematic errors are a potential source of difficulty in our results. I mentioned at the outset that I believe our experiments either uh, indicate a real unknown power source in the experiment or some very obtuse artifact in the measurement system. And if we're going to look for this obtuse artifact, it needs to be in the category of systematic errors. The way we designed our experiments and designed our calorimeter was intentionally to make it as simple as possible, to make the measurements as redundant as possible, to make the experiment as insensitive to drift as we could, knowing that these experiments would last for very long periods of time. And where we uh, anticipated the existence of a systematic error source, we designed the calorimeter in such a way that the observation of excess power would yield a conservative estimate in the presence of such a systematic error. There are some transient corrections which can be made to the data due to the departure of the system from its steady state, and the equation I'll show you for the calorimeter is a steady state equation. And there are corrections that can be made as the system departs from its initial state, as the uh, gas volume pressurizes, as the recombiner in, in these experiments works uh, in an intermittent way. And I'll describe these a little bit. Important things to note are the effect on the energy determination, which is what we're, we're leading to at the end of the day. Measurement uncertainty propagates an uncertainty in the measured energy in a, in a comfortable way. Systematic errors, of course, since we don't know what they are, or we would have corrected for them, propagate errors of either sign and unlimited extent. The transient corrections that we apply integrate to zero if the final and initial states are the same. The equation for the calorimeter is defined here. Basically, we have an isothermal flow calorimeter. We have a, a flowing aliquot of uh, fluid past the electrochemical cell. The fluid is at heat capacity Cp, flowing at a flow rate uh, dm dt m dot. There is a conductive loss term since the heat of the fluid flowing out of the calorimeter will be heated above that of the environment. I'll get to this equation later. I should have put this a little later. In fact, I will. Let me just uh, back off this for a second until I show you more particularly what the experiment looks like. What we wanted to do was design a simple system based upon well-established principles and operate as closely as possible in its steady state. If only because it's easier to describe to people what you've done if you have a simple system and a steady state is more easily described. We wanted to maintain complete control of the operating parameters one of the operating parameters of an electrochemical system is the cell temperature. We felt that we needed to accommodate a very large dynamic range of the heat input and output, a range in the calorimeter from a tenth of a watt to a hundred watts, stable operation for months, online monitoring of all of the relevant variables, including the deuterium to palladium ratio, which we believe to be important in producing this effect. We want to do make multiply redundant measurements of the parameters critical to the calorimetry, in particular of the temperature. We wanted to accommodate a large dynamic range, and we wanted to maintain the accuracy and precision, particularly the accuracy of the measurements, at better than one part per thousand. As I said before, we wanted to make the known sources of systematic error yield conservative uh, estimates of the output heat. We chose to use a flow calorimeter consisting of a container with an approximately 8 hour attic wall through which we pump the calorimetric <coughs> fluid at constant rate and the container is maintained in a constant temperature bath. 
the electrochemical cell gives out heat to the flowing uh, um, heat transfer fluid, and we measure the temperature of this uh, flow at the inlet and the outlet. So the sensitive parameters, the parameters which might be subject to systematic errors, the inlet temperature, the outlet temperature, the mass flow rate, so that the power measured by such a, uh, heat, such a parameter, the heat capacity of the fluid, the mass flow rate, a conductive loss term as that fluid loses uh, heat to its environment, the inlet and outlet temperatures. This is the only equation which governs the steady state operation of this caravan. What we need to do is, uh, is <coughs> what we did was take a large bath that's about a meter uh, huge, in fact. You're looking at it from the top. The bath maintained at constant temperature with respect to, to heaters on the walls, we place in this bath up to four calorimeters in a well-stirred environment. The bath is maintained plus or minus three milli-degrees long-term and uh, short-term. If you look at this thing in profile, seeing two uh, calorimeters, and for this dimension now is of the order of a meter, two flow calorimeters side by side suspended above the bottom of the well-stirred bath. The flow is drawn from the bath, past the two inlet temperature sensors, past the electrochemical cell, which is placed in this environment, out past uh, two outlet temperature sensors, um, platinum resistance uh, temperature devices, RTDs, and in many of the experiments that I'll describe, also two thermistors were placed in that volume and pumped by a constant uh, flow rate pump. If you look at a slightly greater detail of the electrochemical cell, here is the same device with the feet which maintain it above the bottom of the bar. Two inlet sensors in this, in this manifold, I'll show you the outlet manifold in a second. And the electrochemical cell placed with the uh, heat <coughs> transfer fins in the radial direction so that the flow comes from the bath, past the cell, through the annular space between the cell and this evacuated silvered uh, dewar, maintaining the constant temperature boundary, and past the two outlet uh, temperature sensors. One of the very important things that you must do is ensure that the temperatures that you measure are accurate representations of the average temperature of the flowing fluid. You <coughs> must well mix the fluid flow, particularly before the outlet sensors, so that you measure a good average temperature. Here's the uh, um, outlet temperature manifold, two temperature sensors, and the fluid flow, I'll show you the fluid flow path. So what we have here is the bath now to one calorimeter for simplicity. The fluid flow, goodness gracious, that's an old slide. All right, we've got the wrong slide, but it tells the right story. There's a pump, const, uh, constant flow rate, uh, constant displacement pump. The fluid is drawn from the uh, uh, calorimeter through a volumetric flow rate uh, determination onto a computer controlled balance to measure DMDT um, as the computer repeatedly polls the balance to determine the mass flow rate. This drying agent relates to experiments that were done with silicon oil which had a capacity to pick up uh, uh, water and do not relate to our present experiment.